So get ready for episode nine of the Downtown Podcast. In this episode, we're going to talk to you about usegearsale.com, one of the newest websites to come out of downtown Las Vegas. We're going to meet Craig Atkins, one of the newest members of the Vegas Tech Fund. And then, of course, if you'd like to get your hands dirty, we're going to be talking about the Maker's Fair. All that and more on this episode nine of the Downtown Podcast. We have the general idealist from List Sanity here and the person that sponsored the beer everybody's drinking. Yeah, thank you. So give us a rundown. Thank you. It was our pleasure to sponsor the beer. Um, <clears throat> well, List Sanity is a new tech, tar- uh, tech startup in Las Vegas. And basically, as you can see, we are all about List. Lists are what we love to do, and we're hoping people love to do them as much as we do. Um, we want, we're in open beta right now, so we're looking to get the community in uh, Las Vegas on here doing some lists. We even started a new list today, a beer request for the downtown podcast. So if you all have some suggestions, <laughs> yeah, you choose the time. Make sure you uh, choose your beer. And then we also have like favorite startups, and um, we have Ticket Cake ranked number three right now. You might be able to surpass Who's the sanity, above us? Oh, right? <laughs> Sponsor, but, um, all right. Basically, it's all about um, creating and sharing lists. You can have popular lists like your greatest basketball player ever, or you can have something obscure like the weapon you're going to need in the zombie apocalypse. So I think Chuck Norris is ranked number one on that. (laughs) But, um, you know, we just uh, think that this is a great way to uh, do that instant research and find out who's number one. Okay, and if I've got a list of my favorite whatever, like how can I share it? Like how does it work? So basically you would, um, if you were logged in, you would hit the uh, start start a new list button, uh, whatever that is. And then, you know, favorite episode of the Downtown Podcast, and you'd put, you know, each episode on there, and then you'd send it out to your friends via uh, Facebook and Twitter, and then they would come back on and do the list, too, and the site will automatically add all the lo- all of those lists together and tell you who's number one, two, three, four, and whatnot. Mm, gotcha. So, you know, you can solve a lot of debates and uh, arguments that way. Okay, and then what can our audience do to help? Are you guys looking for people just to sign up and use it? Right now we're in open beta, so, you know, the more people on there using it and giving us feedback and letting us know, you know, what type of features they like to see, the better. So just uh, create some lists and get creative with it. Okay, listsanity.com? Yep. Okay, you guys check it out, and thank you for sponsoring the beer. I really appreciate it, and it's fun to have you here. So thank Thank you. you. All right. table uh we're finally made it to episode nine we never thought we'd make it this far did we <laughs> i think that's pretty much uh worth it pause on its own <laughs> all right but uh let's get let's get technical on this so let's talk about stem uh what it is is it's science technology engineering and math when you look at cities uh employment in tech hotspots like san francisco has flatlined since 2001 to 2012 but in places like las vegas uh, STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math, has gone up 17.2%. Um, do you think this trend is something to really look at and take to heart? I think the trend is definitely something real and something that's actually sustainable and can keep going, right? So. The idea is it used to take a lot of people and a lot of technology to start a company. So you'd have to start with maybe five or 10 people, get to 50 people really, really quickly, and then you'd need hundreds. And to kind of come to a a city that doesn't have a deep technology base and to immediately go from zero jobs to 5,000 overnight is not gonna happen. But if you can build several companies, three, five, 10, 20 people at a time, then you can start to diversify the economy that way. And it absolutely is working. I mean, I think those stats bear it out that the cities that have huge tech populations populations, you know, are flat, right. and cities like Las Vegas and Austin and other cities are actually growing in their technology uh, jobs. And, and so how do you see the uh, future of tech um, 
going in? Like, so more about like the educated labor. Like how do you see that growing and like what are we going to do to bring that in? Yeah, so that is definitely uh, an issue that needs to be solved because that is really kind of one of the caps on growth. I mean, there's only two ways to kind of solve for getting more people. You can either import more people from outside and convince them to move to where you are. Obviously, that's a big component of what's happening here. But homegrown talent and growing more people is, there's if there are people here who don't have those skills and you can get them those skills, then that absolutely helps. Uh, and it's going to be a combination of partnerships with local universities. I know UNLV had a big symposium on STEM education just a couple days ago. They really went through a lot of research on this. And then uh, there's also quite a few good uh, tech schools here in Las Vegas as part of the Clark County school system. So you kind of combine those with maybe some non-traditional forms of education like Code Academy and some of the other systems, right. and you end up with a, a really great uh, way to build the the technology base. So you see UNLV specifically going in the right direction? You think we can lean on them to a certain degree? Or? I think there's, there's, they definitely understand what's happening here, and I think they're starting to move in the right direction. Um, any university, it's a challenging process to, for them to move quickly, but I think their, their heart's in the right place. Okay, that's good. All right. Well, then I'll take that, uh, take it to heart. Um, Melissa, I want to talk to you about uh, feedback. So um, when we moved to Get Cake out here, the first thing we realized was how great feedback was here. But uh, it is a certain type of feedback. So um, we wanted to talk about this article that Tech Cocktail had where they were um, talking about the community coming together to give feedback. What's your opinion on the type of feedback you get around here? Well, I think just how they place people, like visitors already, like going to the Tech Cocktail event, which is what they were talking about, uh, and being postured to find the appropriate people to give you good feedback. So you'll run into engineers who can give you be like, well, maybe that's not, you know, how it should be built or maybe try this instead or you know, designers like myself would be like that's kind of ugly, like maybe you should fix that. Or like, um, but not only that, just like also seeing if it's actually a, a user case. Like if your, you know, if your startup is actually viable, like you have a lot of people that are, you know, entrepreneurs around here that have their own startups. Like is your idea viable? Like is it something that people actually use? Are you solving an issue versus like, you know, just think it's a cool idea? So I think that's actually really important feedback that you do get here a lot. And, and do you feel like you, you, like anyone on the table, do you guys go out of your way to try to give feedback to people that are brand new to the community that you're, you know, only sort of familiar with? Yeah, I mean, personally for us, uh, we've done things like guerrilla warfare on the jelly and just <laughs> <laughs> anybody that comes to us and gives us feedback on our app or our idea, like we'll buy you a beer or do something like that. I think um, Startup Weekend is a great way to figure out like if your idea is just a good idea or if it's something that people are actively searching for to, to solve. You gotcha. Well, speaking about good ideas, how is uh, used gear sale going? Tell us yeah. about this new product Ooh. that Rumsger came up with. Yeah. 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 You got it, yeah. Yeah, so it's it's been amazing. So today is the um, first day of our sale. Um, so when this comes out, it probably will be over, but um, we're gonna keep doing it in the future. <laughs> so we started this idea because um, we had seen people posting stuff to Rumger that was kind of in the outdoor category. And that was something that really excited us because all four of our, like the three founders and our one employee, um, together we all kind of <laughs> noticed that people are laughing out there. <laughs> um, together we all kind of noticed that we all like to go outdoors. So we've done things like go hiking together, and um, we we share, we swap stories about hiking and and camping and all this kind of stuff and climbing and everything. And so we thought, well, I mean, there's there's stuff on Rumger that's about outdoors, and we love to do it. So why don't we build a product around that? Um, and and so yeah, we just built it out and said, hey, purely as a test, let's just throw it out there and see if people like it. Kind of like you were saying, where instead of trying to like go full bore into it, what if we just build out a quick version of this product and see if we can get people that are looking for this kind of thing and want this kind of thing, mm -hmm. and um, and we'll just kind of go from there. So, that's so you're kind of in the feedback zone then, right? I mean, you're throughout a prototype and you're checking out to see how much demand there is? Exactly, that's, that's exactly what we're doing. We're just, we threw out this prototype and like, I, I have to give credit to um, uh, Ray, Alex, and Charles, like, we literally had this idea, and we got the website out in two weeks, and just like, it, it looks really good. Like, <laughs> I'm totally yeah. gonna brag about no, those agree, guys I and agree. their talent because yeah. it looks really good for something that we spent two weeks on, and um, yeah, and we were able to get it out there and get it going, and um, yeah, and people are really excited about it um, on on Facebook and Twitter. Like, 
um, people are giving us really good feedback, and as well as the sale is going really well for us so far. So we couldn't be more excited. Yeah, I saw David down at the jelly. He had a box in his arm. <laughs> said he bought something. So I guess it's working. Yes, yeah, it's working really. And is well. it going to pair up alongside Rumger, or are you kind of just kind of seeing the market to see which direction to put most of your energy into? Or yeah, I think the latter. We're we're really trying to see. We we started up as like kind of a vertical of Rumger, just uh just the outdoor segment of it, and we kind of we spun it a little bit where it's not it's not local. It's anywhere, and we're we're really going down that road of trying to handle the shipping and and really for working on that and it's really tough like shipping is tough and that's that's the original thing we did with rum jers like to remove shipping from it completely but we're like well let's try and tackle that problem with this and so that's what we're doing with this and so um hopefully um and, w and we'll continue to see but yeah it's, it seems to be working out really really well and um you know we're we're a small scrappy startup so whatever if if we start getting more attention to this or more attention to right. another idea like we're gonna follow. We're gonna follow those leads. So we're just kind of, yeah, putting it out there, getting feedback, um, and going with what's working. With okay. Of course. So everybody, check out uh, usedgearsale.com, right? And then uh, you get feedback and let us know how it works. So, all right. Well, thank you guys for coming to the news roundtable. I appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. And uh, thanks for supporting the show. So Craig is has been in charge of fulfillment, and he's got uh, a lot of skill. He's been doing this for a long time, and he is now going to be is offering another way of services. Saying I'm old? No, <laughs> <laughs> so they're just great at filling orders. So, but but first off, uh, most recently I can speak to that I, I uh, for the last past seven years I've been in charge of the fulfillment operations for Zappos.com, and uh, pretty much was responsible for building that entire structure, Jeez. and. Um, uh, so you, you, what I tell everybody is you do the right kind of technology and the right kind of systems for what you need, not overbuilding, not underbuilding. So it's finding that right spot for how you do that. So how big did it get? Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. Yeah, so how big did it get? I mean, from when you first started Zappos to when it ended, how uh, much growth was there? When I joined the company, we were doing about, in dollars, we were doing about $300 million a year. And uh, on our peak days, we were shipping about 20000 packages a day, which is a lot, quite a bit. Uh, most recently, uh, we're doing a lot more than that in revenue, which I'm not allowed to speak to because okay. we're now part of a publicly traded company, so those the revenues are not right. We can all buy discussed. up stock, no problem. Yeah, <laughs> but um, the uh, our our order volume is closer to uh, exceeding 200,000 packages a day. Per day, yeah. so. Uh, so tell us, what are some of the responsibilities and pressures that came along with this job? Like, tell me about like the day-to-day -day <laughs> things that you dealt with. Well, one of the pressures was when I first joined the company. Tony approached me and said, "Craig, one of the things we want to do as an objective is be able to ship every order within an hour from somebody that buys it." And <laughs> so my first reaction was, "An hour." <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> Maybe that's just not going to so, happen. Well, no, I would never say that, but uh, right. uh, that, but you was, that was that. definitely but a I, pressure. But I can say that for you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, most, most companies are happy if they can do it within 24 hours. Some don't even come close to doing that. Um, but uh, we worked very hard on that. There was a good bit of engineering involved. Uh, in my previous life prior to Zappos, I was industrial engineering manager for a company that's much larger than it. Zappos. That oh. <laughs> so you've dealt with that before. You've dealt, dealt with that before, yes, yeah. and much larger volumes than Zappos. But probably not well. with hour delivery times. But not with hour, yeah. hourly delivery times. But uh, we spent a lot of times with our uh, companies that we bought uh, our equipment from and a lot of engineering resources and a lot of iterations on designs. And on our single item orders, when somebody ordered one pair of shoes, we were able to get uh, our average order cycle time to, down to about 45 minutes. Okay, so, wait, so when you first got this uh, this hour <laughs> request, um, mm -hmm. I'm sure you were kind of dying inside. But um, was it? Did, did Tony explain that? Is like, is that how we saw customer service, or was that just because it, it was an awesome challenge? It was to his tackle, obsession or? with customer service. Right? Okay, you know, to be able to deliver wow. Yeah, and that was his version of delivering wow. And the interesting thing was, at one point in my uh, career with Zappos, I was also over customer loyalty team, yeah. and uh, I had a. An, a lot of interesting conversations with some of our call reps and they they would complain because they would have customers that would call and say I ordered something 
and I just went back in to change my order because I wanted to add something to it or I wanted to change the color size, oh, wait, whatever. It's already been changed. And for some reason, the system will not let me change the order. What is wrong with you? And the, and the, and the call rep would have to say, well, we shipped it already. And they said, no, you didn't. I just ordered it less than an hour right. ago. It's like, well, yeah, we Our did. Our algorithm so, predicted what you were going to buy, so it's already out there. Yeah, I figured that was the next iteration of design yeah. is to be able to read to hire psychics and ship it the day before you order it. <laughs> That's what we're going to get. So, so okay, so that leads to the next question, which was, uh, what, how do you see fulfillment growing? I mean, like, where is the next frontier, and um, for startups especially? Startups, I think, is a, is a particular challenge, and which is a fairly decent segue with what I'm doing with Vegas Tech Fund now. So um, I've now joined Vegas Tech Fund, and okay. what uh, my, uh, thank you <laughs> for the one whoop. Yeah. <laughs> Who's that guy that likes Vegas Tech Fund? Find him. But um, what I'm, I'm, I'm doing now is I'm working with companies in the area and portfolio companies under Vegas Tech Fund uh, to help them with their shipping needs, supply chain needs, manufacturing needs, and, and just basically that whole thing, fulfillment, distribution, being able to get goods from the company yeah. to the customer, whatever that means. So I'll be helping them with those things, giving advice and, and, and uh, direction, and maybe even helping in other ways, like helping them to negotiate rates on things oh, for shipping that. and material, even something as horribly exciting as <laughs> buying cardboard boxes to ship the stuff in. Right. <laughs> yeah, you, know, so. you don't think about how much stuff some places need. Uh, so what sparked the uh, change? Like, why uh, did you think this was a good fit? And like, why did you join the team? Well, as, as most people know, Zappos was acquired by Amazon.com uh, about three years ago. And we, last year, we made the strategic decision. Uh, Zappos was going to have to grow our fulfillment operation significantly, the, uh, the, mm -hmm. the network. We were looking at adding another million square feet of warehouse space within a year, this Jeez. was last year, yeah. in order just to get through the growth that we were experiencing. And what we decided to do is it made, it made a lot of sense that Zappos was growing this really big network, mm -hmm. and Amazon already had this giant network, nationwide network, so we decided to, to meld those things together. And Amazon is now uh, taking over the Zappos fulfillment operation, gotcha. so which gave me some free time to do other stuff like working with Vegas Tech Fund. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. So, well, and, and so for the Vegas Tech Fund companies or maybe other companies in the future, when you, um, if you help more, like what, uh, what, do you, what do you look for? Like what kind of entrepreneurs would benefit most from your skill set? Really anybody that has a physical product that needs to move it from point A to point B. And okay. that doesn't always mean just e-commerce business to consumer. That could mean business to business. It could mean manufacturing to something else so give any examples really, you could throw up maybe that would help people like uh company wise I, i'm i'm not sure what i should talk about with whom as okay, far as okay. what, what no, companies yeah, and everything yeah, yeah, but yeah. basically e-commerce startups and the, the most common question i get and the most common thing that ha that comes to me is we've got this great product we've got this great website we've got this great idea it's growing we have no idea how to do the supply chain we have no idea how to manage the moving parts of this and we're mm -hmm. we're, we're really struggling with getting it to the person or to the place where it's supposed to go and that's what i'm here to help them for gotcha okay and then um so what kind of qualities um do you look for like in the people that you work work best with so if somebody's going to work with mm -hmm. you like what do you look for in a company that makes you think that these people can solve a fulfillment challenge um somebody that's passionate about what they're doing and and somebody that has uh, great ideas great execution and is really just driven okay because everything else is is very solvable the, the one thing I thought trying to sound self-effacing, um, fulfillment is not rocket surgery. Okay. It's, you know, it's put a thing in a box, make that box go from point A to point B. So uh, it's, yeah. it's, it's very easy to understand and learn those processes. It's, there may be some experiences that they don't understand as far as some of the nuances behind it. So that's how I can help gotcha. with the nuances. And that's, yeah, that's where your skill set would kind of yeah. help in the most. So. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I think that's kind of it. I wanted like to just end. I wanted to know, like, um, do you have anything like real fun that you do like in your free time? Like, do you have any projects going on right now that may involve cattle or <laughs> anything like that that's, you don't want to talk about? That sounded dirty. I don't know. 
That's what I meant, yeah, you know? Well, <laughs> Actually, I uh, go so, <laughs> interestingly enough, I don't live... Because <laughs> during our free interview, there's a lot of cows in the background. I don't live full-time in Vegas. I spend one week a month here. Um, but I actually live in Kentucky, and uh, two years ago, I bought a cattle farm. That's hence the question. So I live with 160 cows. <laughs> right, it's just normal. They're outside, I'm inside. It's all good. Um, but, uh, so we're, we're, I know nothing about farming, but I'm raising cows now for... All right. Diversion. We'll get you a farm, we'll get you a farm <laughs> consultant. You can trade work. You so know? It's a whole new level in fulfillment <laughs> operation for me. Right. All right. Well, thank you for coming out. We really right. appreciate it in the interview. And thank happy you. to have you part of it. So thank you. Thanks, Greg. Yeah. All right. For those of you that tuned in last week, you learned about Vegas Tech's involvement with South by Southwest from Gabe Shepard. If you'd like to learn more and meet the staff in charge of the interactive track in Austin and the new South by Southwest V2E Las Vegas event in August, come to Downtown Cocktail Room on Wednesday the 23rd from 7 to 9 p.m. Also on the 23rd at 5 p.m. in the Downtown Construction Zone is the next Shift Vegas Mindshare. Join this unconference and learn more about what progress was made in the communities in 2012 and what to look forward to in the upcoming year from the current and future doers. If you'd like to help shift the face of Vegas in entrepreneurship, education, politics, arts, and more, be sure to join at RSVP on TicketCake.com. Following that, at 6 p.m. is the Women in Design panel discussion by Colab LV at the Amanda Harris Gallery. Learn more from the women in fields of interior design, landscape, engineering, and architecture with a panel moderated by Shelley Hutchins, the senior editor of Hanley Wood out of Washington, D.C. If you're looking to get your hands dirty, Join the Make Your Own Handcraft Paper and Greeting Cards Skillshare class on Saturday, January 26th, starting at 11 a.m. at Studio 810. Learn how to transform your old discarded office documents into something amazing, which could come in handy since it's almost Valentine's Day. Register for the class on Skillshare.com. Later that day, it kicks off the Business of Art series hosted by Poet Las Vegas from 12.30 to 3.30 p.m. at Userlib. If you're an artist, MC, poet, singer, musician, or creative, this four-part workshop is for you. It's for those talented individuals looking to expand their craft but lack the resources or knowledge to do so. The first segment will cover product publishing and copywriting. Space is limited, so be sure to register on TicketCake.com to claim your spot. That evening, join us for the one-year anniversary of Inspire Las Vegas at 5 p.m. at the Downtown Construction Zone. Listen to talks about how many of your inspiring neighbors came to be in Las Vegas. Now to round that off, we go back to the table and talk a bit more about the upcoming Maker Fair. All right, thanks for that, Melissa. We appreciate you. We are back with Susan and Melissa somehow. Um, so tell <laughs> us um, how our viewers can take part in the Maker's Fair's mission to entertain, inform, connect, and inspire. I'm actually really glad you asked Dylan because I'm so excited about it. Okay. Yeah. So what we want essentially is for people, as many people as we could possibly get, to come down to make a fair on the 2nd of February. And what we want them to do is to come with an open mind. We want them to expect to be wowed, to be inspired, to see things they've probably never seen before, to see things that you know people have made that they didn't even think was possible before. And uh, we want people to take that home and be really inspired. And maybe they'll go home and make something cool. And maybe they'll show that at Make a Fair next year. And if you've already made something and you didn't happen to get a booth with us this year, you know, we would love for you to bring that down as well. You know, we want you to walk around with something that you've made. We want people to ask you about it. We want you to share how you made it. That's and nice. we want you to just be able to spread the spirit of, of Mini Maker Fair, which is just making, sharing, educating, and having like a really good time. So if this is my first Maker Fair, mm -hmm. which it is actually, but um, like what, what should I what should I expect? Like what what are people getting into? Okay, so imagine like a science fair, except people are bringing yes. robots. The volcanoes is that what you're thinking? <laughs> yeah, baking why not? soda volcanoes. Perfect. You might see that we do have a minute a person who makes miniature worlds, so she might have a volcano, Ooh. but I Sounds don't know. Um, you'll see things like fashion. Uh, you'll see puppets. You will see Make Your Own Soap, which I believe is going to have an interactive booth where you can go and actually have a go at that. Sounds like a good idea for, you know, the Absolutely. culture. Absolutely. Yeah. For smelly Hush people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, have a, we have a kid's zone, so kids can come and make and play and be inspired. And, you know, we have way too many robots. Not that there's such thing as too many robots. You're right. But we have a lot of robots. Um, we have some it kind depends of... Depends on how smart those robots are. Yeah. I know, right? Because they're not smarter than us. 
Never. Yeah. <laughs> no. We'll work on that. We'll, make, sorry, sure, we'll yeah. make sure they're safe. <laughs> but we they keep them stupid for us. <laughs> right. No singularity yeah. needed. Yeah. They'll do some fun stuff. I think you'll be quite blown away by them. But yeah, we also have things like freestanding installations as well as. Uh, yeah, just just about anything you can imagine. We so we have over thirty five makers, so you, there's definitely something to see for everybody. Okay, and then where do people go to sign up, or when is it exactly? And um, so it's the second of February, and you can sign up to get tickets on makerfairvegas.com, and that's makerfair with that spelling there. And the tickets right now in advance sale are eight dollars for um, adults, six dollars for kids. And on the day, you can rock up as well and get tickets for $10 for, for adults and $8 for, for children as well. And uh, if you want to also find out about what kind of makers you might see, you can also go on the website. Okay. And that actually profiles a couple of the makers, and we should have some more updated soon. So Okay, get that's into cool. It. Are you a maker? Do you do anything? I am. Um, I actually do 3D printed jewelry, Ooh. which is yeah, really fun. So <laughs> I'm going to be at the Hackerspace booth. So we have a Hackerspace in Vegas called Sin Shop, and I'll be there. And uh, I do cool little steampunk. Kind oh, that's of cool. Like do that. you guys have a maker bot, or what do you have for a 3D printer? Um, I actually have a printer bot, Junior, which is really cool. Ooh, I yeah. heard of it, but I'm not up on the 3D printing machine, so... It's good. All right. Well, thank you for coming out. I uh, really appreciate you um, mm-hmm. talking about the Makers Fair. And then uh, we're going to end the podcast. One uh, reminder is that um, if you guys want to come to an event, which is actually filming the podcast, uh, sign up on ticketcake.com forward slash downtown podcast. You do have to be registered to get past security. And um, we all know, yeah, people, people know that story. But uh, uh, we're excited to have people here. You guys are more welcome to come to the filming. We do it every Thursday at 9 o'clock. Just make sure to pre-register. And uh, we are doing one thing different to the show now so if you guys are watching this on youtube in the comments below if you would please interact with the community by answering this question which is the same one that i asked craig earlier what kind of qualities do you find in the people that you work best with and uh that's it so we're done with episode nine thank you guys we appreciate you coming out thank you Follow us, remember like a flashback. Vegas Tech, don't forget to spell it with the hashtag.